game time for the untouchable true school sports. Let's go, baby. Bow. Be careful what you wish for because because it can become a reality. Yeah. The Untouchable True School Sports Empire proudly presents something the boxing game's been missing. Hey, what's going on? It's your boy BT, and I came here to talk some boxing with the thousands of True School Sports subscribers. All right, so I wanted to come here and sound off on a fight that happened almost two weeks ago because when it happened, I woke up and I woke up to like three or four messages specifically about this fighter and, and this fight. And that fight was, you know, one of Japan's very own Subaru Murata, you know, top contender at 122. Um, you know, he took on a fighter named Ka Kaito Yamaski, who was 9-0. So you had 8-0 against 9-0, you know, two fighters squaring off for the WBO Asia Pacific Super Bantamweight title. So that, for those of you who don't know, for all the verbiage of the, these titles, that's a regional belt that they give to fighters. Uh, if you win that belt, it fast tracks you to get into the top 15 of the WBO rankings. So... Very important fight for the development of both these men's careers. And as far as the fight itself, it was a good fight. A lot of exchanges. Um, you know, I thought Subaru Murata, for the most part, w was doing a good job of, of, of... Even in the rounds he was losing, I, I still felt he had control of the fight with his feet because um, he seemed to have a bit more foot speed and movement so he could dictate more in the ring. Yamashi kind of needed um, Murata to be right there for him to land that big chopping straight right hand, right? And so Murata dropped uh, Yamaski very early in the fight. And, um, you know, it, it seemed to be like a normal Subaru Murata fight. And then, and then in round seven, you know, Subaru started getting very defensively reckless, kept his head on the center line, and he got clipped with a right hand that, that dropped him. And, 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 you know, he tasted the canvas for the first time in his career. So Subaru Murata got some questions asked him in this asked of him in this fight, but luckily for him, and for you know credit to him, he showed a lot of uh, grit and gumption to uh, pack this guy up and stop him. Because ultimately, you know if you if you if you were really paying attention attention to the exchanges early in the fight, Subaru had more punching power than this guy, and 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 it, and it paid dividends uh, down the stretch. So Murata now runs his record up to nine and zero, nine and zero, or yeah nine and zero, or eight and zero. Eight knockouts. Every fighter he has fought has been stopped thus far. So it's a, it's been the dream start for his career. But now he's developing and progressing into that stage of his career where now, okay, you know, uh, you just won a, a top regional title. You're going to get ranked really soon. Um, he's not ranked in any of the sanctioning bodies yet, but he's going to be. He's 17 on box strike. So he's right there to, to start taking those important key step up fights at 122, you know. With the way they're moving him, by the time I think he, he even gets into title contention, like true title contention, Naya Inouye will not be there anymore. So he, he could be in, in the running for fighting a vacant belt or something like that. But um, my question is, I, I had this legitimate question about Subaru Murata, and I, and I like him. You know, I've interviewed him. I met him in Japan. Lovely person. But my legitimate concern for Subaru is that, you know, thus far in his career, everyone he's fought, they haven't been able to stand up to the punching power for the duration of a fight. Um, this guy showed a bit more resistance. This last guy he fought showed a bit more resistance and even dropped him, and he still stopped him. What, what's going to happen when, you know, maybe he gets hurt earlier in the fight or they can stand up to the power? How Can, can Subaru Murata find another way to win when the punching power isn't working for him? That's a legitimate question. You know, his head stays right there on the center line, so he relies a lot on his punch. His, he's, he's, he's what we call in boxing an offensive defensive fighter his offense is his defense and um you know he, he relies on his offense to push guys back so that he's not getting punched on and also he's got very he's got, he's got pretty quick feet good feet for, for a guy at 122 and um yeah so my thing is like look at 122 you look at some of the guys he's ranked in and around right now he's number 17 on box rec so if you look at the names that he that are around him they're, they're good fighters you know right that right right there at you know 15 is T Doheny Right, right there down below him at 18 is Aaron Alameda. These are guys that have fought four world titles, guys that are high-level fighters in the weight class. And those are the kind of fighters I want to see Subaru in there with. You know, Aaron Alameda, TJ Doheny, Elijah Pierce is 13. You know, I think any one of those three fighters for me would su suffice. Um, I definitely like the Aaron Al Alameda fight for Subaru because, you know, Alameda, he's a fighter that's been there with some of the best fighters in the world. He's fought... Louis Neri, you know, fought Angel Leo to a, a very tough fight. Um, you know, been in been in camp, been in uh, been a sparring partner of Naya in a way. So that's a fight. That that's actually a fight. Ideally, 
out of all the fights that of all the names he's ranked in and around, I think that's a fight he needs to take because Alameda is a strong, tough, durable Mexican fighter. He's gonna bring a bit. He's gonna bring a much different dimension than like all these Japanese fighters he's been fighting are bringing. Um, and he's and, he, and he's probably one of the highest level guys in this division based on his level of experience and the opposition he's fought. And he hasn't lost in three years since he lost to Angelo Leo. So um, that being said, you know Murata Murata 2025 is gonna be a, to me a a true watershed moment in the career of Subaru Murata where he's gonna have to really show okay you know we know you're talented we know you got some promise but like can you really cut it at the world level and to me I've seen this movie many times where a guy is as a prospect knocking everyone out and then they fight someone that stands up to their power and their career just gets progressively worse and worse so I'm, ex I'm excited to see um, Murata against uh, I think Alameda to me would be a great test because Alameda stands up to power really well he's durable he's experienced and uh if he can stop a guy like him that to me is a massive statement to the to the rest of the division and uh, a big a big step in his development but you know he only has eight fights so maybe that's a fight they don't take right away i i, I would assume after you know seeing him get dropped and seeing him go through uh some problems in this fight that they're gonna send him back a little bit and, and, and just rein him in a little bit because um you know, there's some things he clearly needs to work on. But again, nonetheless, really good fight. You know, a lot of people had this fight either Subaru Murata winning by a point or they had it dead even go before the knockout. So um, that, that that goes to show you how how close um, this fight was between Subaru Murata and uh, Yamashi. You know, hard, hard, hard fight. But the perfect development fight for a guy that, uh, you know, that's pegged to be one of the next champions coming out of Japan. So, you know, shout out Subaru Murata for getting the job done. And uh, yeah. If you guys had a chance to watch the fight, uh, what did you think about it? What do you guys think about Sumer Murata? Who do you think you should fight next? Leave all your comments down below. Make sure you guys take the time to subscribe. And like I say in every single one of these videos, you can love me or you can hate me, but I'm just a kid from Daniel. So until next time, take care guys. Thank you for watching another video on the untouchable True School Sports Empire. I'm at the Boxing Hall of Fame out here in Canada, in New York. And for more great boxing content, just like this video, make sure you click and subscribe right over here.